The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Bass, for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, according to an August 17th FBI intelligence assessment titled Black Identity Extremists Likely Motivated to Target Law Enforcement Officers, quote, it is very likely that black identity extremist perceptions of police brutality against African Americans spurred an increase in retaliatory violence. So I've tried to get to the bottom of where this report came from, who did it, what its status is. I've asked uh, Attorney General Sessions, I've asked Director Ray, and so now I want to ask you. Did you order the FBI to conduct this assessment? Sorry, what was the date? August 2017, August of this year. No, I did not. Do you know who authored the report? Are you familiar with the report? Not familiar with the report, I'm familiar with the general issue. And so maybe you could talk a little bit about the general issue, yes. in particular, uh, when the FBI began tracking black identity extremism. I think uh, it's important for me to explain, Congresswoman, that uh, the FBI does not make a determination with regard to domestic groups to investigate them based upon their First Amendment views or their affiliation. It bases uh, uh, its decisions on evidence of a propensity to violence. So with regard to members of any ideology, uh, domestically, the FBI would only be investigating if there were some indication. Do you believe that there's a political movement in the country called black identity extremism? I don't believe the FBI intends that to encompass a particular political movement. What they do is they try to categorize different threats that, uh, that they identify. So you said investigate, but before you do an investigation, there's surveillance, correct? N generally, no. There may need to be a determination first that there was a basis for an investigation, typically before any surveillance. So how does that determination take place, and where has it taken place? I, I, uh, if you want details, I need to get back to you. Uh, but the FBI does have very strict guidelines, as you know. Several decades ago, there was quite a bit of controversy about this issue. And the FBI has very uh, detailed guidelines for when they initiate investigations. Uh, and I'm not aware of any departure from those guidelines. So one thing that, uh, and I am aware of the FBI's history uh, from many years ago, COINTELPRO, and many people are looking at this document, Black Identity Extremism, as COINTELPRO 2. Uh, one of the concerns uh, that has been raised and that I raised with Attorney General Sessions and Director Ray is that this document, for whatever reason, was mass distributed to law enforcement uh, offices around the country. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not. So when we talked to uh, Director Ray, it wasn't clear how this term was even developed. In other words, what evidence was it based on mm -hmm. to even come up with a term like that and then to write a document about it and then to distribute it to law enforcement around the country? I don't know the answer to that, Congresswoman, but uh, if it's of any reassurance, I've been in this job for eight months. I haven't seen any indication that the FBI is approaching this in a biased way. Uh, you know, they're conducting investigations where they believe the person who is the subject represents a potential threat, not simply because they believe in an ideology or associate with an ideology, but because they represent a particular threat. And I believe that so, the FBI guidelines are designed specifically to ensure that there are no abuses. So what I am hearing from activists around the country, uh, in particular activists who were protesting law enforcement and, you know, police brutality or uh, deaths at the hands of law enforcement is that they're being visited by the FBI, that the FBI is leaving, you know, business cards. And then what the concern about that is, is that if they do engage in a conversation with an FBI agent and perhaps make a mistake or maybe say something that isn't true, then they're vulnerable to be prosecuted for lying to a law enforcement officer. So the activists that have received visits by the FBI have never been involved in violence at all. Are you aware of that happening in any of your offices around the country? No. Let me just express another concern about this. When a document that doesn't seem to have any scientific basis that develops a category called black identity extremism that nobody can say whether or not it really exists, when you send a document like that to law enforcement around the country, you know, in some places I will worry that they will take that to say that any time there is an officer involved shooting and then there is a protest that the people that protest might be black identity extremists. Congresswoman, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the FBI is not uh, investigating people who are peacefully protesting. As I said, I haven't read that document. Uh, I'll, I'll review it, uh, and 
I'll see what it says. But I, I would appreciate it if you would. And if there is no basis for this term, that then the FBI take the step to retract the document and send a message to law enforcement around the country that no such category exists. I yield back my time. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, for five minutes. Yeah.